If I got a single euro for every time someone said Raditz was wasted potential for X, Y, and Z reasons on a Dragon Ball Discord server, Dragon Ball YouTube comment section, Dragon Ball forum, I still probably wouldn't be able to fix Croatia's economy, but regardless, way too many fucking people repeat this sentiment ad nauseum, especially in lieu of the Moscow X What If Raditz Came Back series, where he marries lunch, has a daughter with her, and that daughter goes on to fight in the Tournament of Power and does a whole bunch of other stuff. Now look, if people like their What If Dragon Ball stories, I don't have a problem with that, but can we please stop shitting on actually good material just so we can jerk off these What If fantasies? These ideas of, oh, what if Raditz was another redeemed Saiyan? Or, oh, what if Raditz was like a cool uncle character to Gohan and Goten? Or what if Raditz became strong and he became like a rival to Vegeta. First of all, Raditz executes his role in the story perfectly. He is one of the best opening salvos for any Dragon Ball storyline ever. At this point in the story, when Raditz appears, Goku is the strongest man in the world. He has beaten the original Piccolo, and he's beaten the reincarnated, more powerful Piccolo. He is so strong that God wanted to give his position, which Goku obviously was not interested in. And so what do you do from here? Goku's beaten armies, he's beaten robots, he's beaten ancient evils, he's beaten the reincarnations of ancient evils, so what do you do? You go to space. Or rather, Rather, space comes to you. And so when Raditz appears, a whole bunch of stuff is just immediately happening. Dramatic reveals, great battles, everything is ratcheting up by a million times. This dude shows up and he easily beats up the world's strongest man, steals his kid, and then proceeds to school two of the strongest men on the planet Earth together, and it's only by a bunch of flukes, coincidences, and lucky breaks, and the sacrifice of Goku, the protagonist of Dragon Ball himself, to beat this guy. And then, when this guy is dying, he says, lol, there's two more science coming, peace, and then dies, pretty much telling telling everybody that beating me was basically nothing because my two partners are coming and they're way more fucking powerful than I ever was. Just from this alone, Raditz is already a worthy character who more than deserves his due respect. But it's really what Raditz represents to Goku himself that makes him such a great character. See, a lot of people say that, well, Raditz is Goku's brother, so why is he evil? Why doesn't he get a second chance? Well, here is the reason why. Before Minus, and especially Dragon Ball Super Broly, went about whitewashing the Saiyans, creating various implications of, oh, it was actually kind of Frieza's fault that the Saiyans turned out as bad as they did, none of that shit exists when the Saiyan arc itself was written in the late 80s. The Saiyans were all evil, immoral, genocidal bastards who were just as bad, if not worse, than Frieza himself. They cared only about murder, destruction, the relishing of both, and they were some of the most evil pricks in the entire galaxy. They were pawn scum shitbags completely undeserving of even basic human decency and Goku was one of them. Remember, when Roshi reveals that Grandpa Gohan found Goku, he explains that when Goku landed, he was still vicious, uncontrollable, and he was worried about what was he going to do with the kid until Goku had the big accident that resulted in his head trauma. Goku was so fucking evil from birth that it took head trauma that could have easily killed him to reboot his personality enough for Grandpa Gohan to impart some different, more positive values onto him. If Goku didn't have that head trauma, it is very likely that he eventually would have just killed Grandpa Gohan himself and went on to destroy the entire planet. Goku was not special or exempt. When the Saiyan arc was written, he was not the son of special, loving Saiyan parents who passed on these qualities onto him or some shit. No, Goku was just as bad as all the rest of them, and it took a freak accident to give him even a chance of becoming more than that. Giving Goku a brother, a blood relative, you sell that message more. That not only was Goku not some kind of 
special exempt case from Cyan Evil, neither was Goku's family, because Goku's brother is right fucking here, and he's easily the most evil son of a bitch at the time of his appearance in Dragon Ball. Raditz is what Goku would have been if he was raised like every other sign was, if he didn't have his head trauma, if he wasn't raised by Grandpa Gohan. He is literally an evil version of Goku, and the blood relation between them isn't there as some kind of wait for Toriyama to bring him back and give him a redemption arc. No, it's there to sell the dark Goku reflection image. And Raditz executes it perfectly. Raditz acts as all Saiyans do. He talks a big game, he's all very cocky, he's very confident, he can just walk over everybody, but he doesn't have that sense of self-improvement that Goku has. He doesn't look at fighting as a means of testing himself and improving himself. He looks at it as just as a means of indulging in his sadistic tendencies, and the second things start going wrong for him, Raditz doesn't see this as an opportunity to better himself, he freaks the fuck out, he gets dead desperate, he begs, he tosses any kind of pride he has completely to the side to save his own ass. He is just a cowardly mass murderer who talks big when he's in control, but folds immediately when that control is stripped away from him. And that is the kind of person Goku would have been. This alone should be explanation enough for why anyone with any kind of fucking common sense or any kind of sense of what a good story does would understand that Raditz is not a wasted character. But because I am addressing the Dragon Ball fandom at this moment, and that's like talking to a brick fucking wall, I'm going to kill a bunch of these other dumb fan ideas that everyone throws around whenever they say Raditz was wasted potential. Here's the first one. Raditz could have been another redeemed scion. So basically you just want another Vegeta around, because the whole thing with Vegeta in the Boo arc especially is that Vegeta was the quintessential scion. He was in fact even more evil than most other Saiyans were by the way he callously tosses aside Nappa and Raditz, and it takes years of living on Earth in peace and a midlife crisis for Vegeta to finally let go of his worst tendencies and to let go of the days when he was a genocidal maniac to the side. And it works because Vegeta, like I said, is the quintessential sign. He is everything wrong about science in one single character, and that's what makes his development good. Having Raditz around for that basically accomplishes the same fucking thing except not as good because Vegeta is the exemplar of the sign people as they were before. Or what about when people say, well, uh, Raditz could have been a cool uncle character to Gohan and Goten. You mean like fucking Piccolo is? Because that's what all Piccolo is to Gohan. He is basically like his uncle. That's his entire fucking role in the story. So why does he need two Piccolos? It doesn't make any sense. And here's my absolute favorite one, and this is one I lay completely on the blame of Masako X. The whole idea of, oh, like Raditz would be like a low-level scion, but he would improve, and, and, and he would be like a rival to Vegeta, which is literally what Goku fucking is. Goku was even more of a worthless fodder scion than Raditz was. Goku was weaker than Raditz. Goku needed to get special training in the afterlife from a super god to become stronger than his brother. The whole dynamic between Goku and Vegeta nowadays is that Goku is a low-level sign who through hard work and quite a few lucky breaks and of course the Dragon Balls was able to overcome what anyone thought was possible between him and his, you know, natural potential and get to some crazy heights that no one ever expected him to. And that's why it works. And why the fuck do we need another Goku for Vegeta to angst about being inferior to? It's completely useless. It's superfluous bullshit that doesn't do anything. It doesn't fill a hole that isn't filled up in the existing character dynamics, just like all the other examples I just listed off aren't. And frankly, Dragon Ball is already a series that has a big fucking problem of just not letting characters stay dead, getting rid of them once they've served their purpose. And now you want to add even more superfluity to a bloated cast that probably would have just been better off telling everyone except Goku to fuck off. 
So yeah, that's why Raditz is not wasted potential. He executes everything he is meant to do perfectly. He's the perfect starting villain for the Sign Arc. He's a perfect messenger of doom and shocking revelations. And he's a perfect mirror image to his brother. He should never be brought back. He should never be redeemed. He doesn't need to become an uncle figure to Goten or Gohan. He doesn't need to be another low-level Saiyan to annoy Vegeta. Miss me with that bullshit and stop wasting your brain cells on it.